So why do distribution networks change? And if you're thinking they don't, they do. And I'll explain, coming right up. So what do I mean when I say, why do distribution networks change? A distribution network is not a set and forget thing. It, it's very much a living and dynamic thing, if you think about it. And I've been helping companies for more than 25 years fix up their distribution networks. And what I wanted to do this week is to share with you some of the reasons that distribution networks don't function as they should anymore, and some of the things that you really need to look at in your own distribution network. So first of all, what, what are some of the signs maybe that a distribution network isn't operating as well as it could? Um, the number one that people talk to me about is rising cost. Uh, whether that's you know cost as a percentage of sales or unit costs or just overall sort of aggregated costs, they say, Rob, you know, our costs are increasing all the time. We really need to have a look at our distribution network. Um, it's becoming very inefficient. So cost is generally the, the first signal that you'll see. But why are the costs increasing? We need to kind of lift the hood on that and understand what's causing it. Uh, very often in conjunction with that, you'll see poor service. Um, and typically this is because the deployment of inventory in the network is, is not really good. Uh, there's a lot of double handling and all of that can lead to poor customer service as well as the rising cost, of course. So that's another thing to look out for. Um, running out of storage capacity, that's another one. Uh, that's very common. I, I talk to companies almost every week about things like that. You know, we're running out of space. We've got extra offsite storage. You know, that's an alarm bell. Um, we need to reconfigure our warehouse to try and fit more in. All of these things are indications that maybe the distribution network hasn't been looked at for a while and, and maybe it's not quite doing the job it was designed for. Why is that? Well, things change, uh, constantly changing. And I, I don't need to remind you about the changes that we've experienced over the last couple of years. So we're shooting this in, what are we, March 22. <clears throat> 2022. So we've had, you know, two years of, of pandemic and huge supply chain disruptions. But these kinds of changes go on all the time, maybe not quite as extreme. But if you think about it, your sales volumes are always changing in a distribution network. They might be going up, they might be going down, you might have acquired other businesses, brought on new products. So that product mix is constantly changing. Channels, that's a huge one that we've seen over the last couple of years, particularly distribution channels themselves change. And so that can have an impact on how your distribution network operates in terms of where warehouses are located, how inventory is deployed, the types of transport that you're using for that final delivery. Um, service levels change. Wow, have they changed over the last couple of years? Um, so much more home delivery, people wanting things much quicker, much more flexible. The demands placed on a distribution network have increased substantially over the last couple of years. Um, so all of this has an impact on the structure of that distribution network its ability to operate at a reasonable cost and its ability to deliver uh, really good service. Um, so what are some of the quick fixes that people do? <laughs> and this is very common, which it's kind of like throwing petrol on the fire to a degree. Uh, they'll, they'll put more warehouses into the network, particularly additional warehouses, you know, very often called offsite storage. Uh, they'll put more inventory into the network. And we've seen that, of course, over the last couple of years, utilizing more inventory as a buffer against um, you know, irregular or inconsistent supply. Um, we see people changing transport carriers, shopping around, trying to uh, reduce costs, perhaps get a better service, maybe because the product mix has changed, they need different carriers. Um, and all of these things tend to be a little bit of a short term focus. And, and that's fine. You know, you've got to keep that distribution network operating efficiently and, and you need to be identifying these things that you can fix in the short term. But the short term answers are not necessarily going to keep you going for very long. So what I would suggest is that you ask yourself, what is driving these changes? The changes that you're seeing, be it increasing cost or poor service or running out of capacity, what's the underlying cause? 
And you need to understand that before you can start developing solutions. So it would be great for me to be able to sit here and say, if you're seeing any of those disruptive symptoms in your distribution network, here's what you've got to do. But every dif distribution network is different. Um, so what I would like to do is to ask you to look at your distribution network, lift the hood on it, where things are not operating as efficiently as they should. Look for those underlying causes, uh, service changes, changes in product mix, uh, changes in order profile, and kind of track through what's the impact that that's having on your distribution network and costs particularly. Because a distribution network is not a set and forget thing. It has to be constantly managed, tweaked, improved, and changes made to it through its life. So what can I do to help you? Um, the, I can give you some more resources. So let me put some resources down below. Do make sure you go and have a look. I'm gonna put two links. One will be a link to a complete playlist on distribution networks. I might put a couple of playlists to, to uh, playlists on this channel. So you can go and have a look at those, different aspects of distribution network design and trying to tweak them. Um, I'll also put a list down there of articles on our blog. Uh, on the same topic, uh, so lots more to go in there. If you have any specific questions regarding distribution networks, do comment down below and I answer all those questions myself. Um, so by all means, you know, if there's some specifics around a particular industry or something like that, ask. Um, if you need some help with your distribution network, well, that's kind of what I do, it's my day job. So feel free to reach out to me uh, and I'll put a LinkedIn link or something down below where you can reach me. So there we go, just a quick video this week talking about distribution networks. They're not set and forget, just please remember that. And you have to constantly monitor them to see what's causing disruption within its you know, efficiency, if you like. What's causing those increased costs? What's causing that, that impact in service? And you're constantly tweaking it, like trying to keep the engine fine-tuned. So I hope that was of interest this week. Uh, oh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, do please hit that subscribe button, which is really important at the moment because we're almost at 50,000 subscribers. So maybe you can help us reach that milestone. And there's two very good reasons why you should hit subscribe. One helps me because it helps me see what topics are of interest because I can see which videos people have subscribed to. So if I see lots of subscriptions to a particular topic, I know that that topic's much more important to people so I can do more. The other benefit is for you because you might be thinking, oh, now where did I see that video on distribution networks? And that guy mentioned that there was other videos I should look at. If you subscribe, the, your, the subscription will appear in the left-hand sort of uh, column on your YouTube window. So you've got the videos there down the left-hand side, you've got those options. One of those is subscriptions, so you'll be able to find the channel anytime you want. So thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel particularly, welcome. Uh, we have videos coming out every week, generally on a Tuesday evening, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.